everyone, my name's Hannah and I head up the recruitment here at UMove uh, Sales and Lettings. One interview that I'm particularly interested in, in conducting today is an interview with our very own Managing Director, Nick Neal. So Nick, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey and how you joined UMove? Yeah, I can do. So I joined back in October 2013, um, so I signed the franchise agreement then and I think I was the third franchisee, wasn't I, Hannah? She was. And uh, then we launched the business on the 1st of February uh, 2014 after we'd gone through training and so on. Uh, but I suppose how did I get into you, Move? Well, I came from a background in the corporate world. So uh, I'd most recently been before that a sales director for a publishing business, and before that a commercial director for a fuel card business, and before that an account director for a payment processing business. Lots of different uh, corporate roles. and. Um, you know, I'd spent my career working my way up through the corporate ladder, as most people do. And you find yourself in a place where you start to evaluate what you want to do next. And for me personally, and something that I hear from lots of uh, franchisees, is that kind of nagging doubt that they haven't quite done it for themselves. And that was definitely the attraction for me to get involved with you move way back then. I'll kind of take yourself back to it was at the franchise show in Birmingham that we uh, that we first met. So. At that point, you move. Uh, we only had one franchisee mm. on the uh, on on the books, um, and you know, at that point, that was that was quite a risk investing mm. into a business that yeah. didn't even have a marketing plan. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that was one of the things that appealed to me because I knew that you know I wanted to start a new business uh, for myself, and I kind of thought it's going to be in the franchising space, um, because there's lots of reasons why anyone would buy into a franchise, and maybe we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I also like the fact that it, the U-Move business wasn't quite fully formed because you know I felt able to then kind of do what I thought might be appropriate and having spoken to the founders back then, you know, understanding what they were trying to do with the business and where they wanted to take it, that resonated very much with my own sort of aspiration, certainly building the whole business around the customer and delivering a great customer experience that really sort of rung a few bells for me. So I thought, well, maybe I can help along the way to really develop and refine the proposition. And I think that's what we were able to do. So at that point, they had, um, they didn't have a model. Uh, so, you know, what you could say that it's it's actually easier to start a new move business now because you've had all the TV mm -hmm. problems when you started. Um, and now we've got a, a, a marketing plan for them to mm. follow. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And, and a lot of franchisees ask me, what would I do differently or, or so on and it, and it is around the, the full package that we have now within the UMove uh, franchise so if you go back to 2013-14 we didn't really have a customer website uh, we didn't have a, a strategic marketing plan for new franchisees to deploy to get leads and opportunities into their new business uh, we didn't have all of the telephony support we have now through Moneypenny a leading supplier in our industry and a whole load of other operational support services and, and just clearing away the noise from the day-to-day -day work. None of that support existed back then, but it all does now. At that point of kind of signing on the dotted line, yes, I'm going to be a Yumu franchisee. What, you know, what was what was your vision of, of your business at that point? Where did you see your vision uh, for your business going? Uh, well, I suppose it was um, a couple of the really things. In the, in the very, very early uh, part of the journey, um, I didn't really have a long-term vision at all. Uh, quite honestly, um, because my wife at the time was a mortgage broker and you know, I kind of thought, well, once I get the business set up and I've ticked that box in my mind of can I set up and start and establish a business, then I'd go and do something else and let Sarah run the the, the UMU business in, alongside being a mortgage broker. Um, and I thought that might take me yeah, three, six months, something like that. Um, but after that period of time, I was actually quite enjoying it. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll give it a year. So I gave it a year and then here I am. <laughs> We're so what, seven, eight years later. Um, because it is such a great business. And, and from coming from other industries and not in property and estate agency, um, you don't realise how much fun you know this job can be and you can earn some good money at it. So you know, I stuck around for a year and then I thought, oh, well, I might as well stick around for another year. And I ended up running the York franchise for three and a half years instead of uh, sort of three to six months because it was just such a great thing to be doing uh, and I just really enjoyed it. And you can only do that, you can only have that luxury if you earn enough money to sustain. Um, so both of those things worked really well. 
very quickly you you expanded mm -hmm. um, from a territory point of view and also um, a team point of view. Yep. Um, so do you want to just explain how that, that journey happened mm. and, and the size of uh, your yep. team? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I had a, a territory that I was working myself and that was fine. And you know, you kind of get to a point where you feel your time and you don't really feel that you've penetrated deeply enough into that territory. So there's more opportunity there. And you kind of think, well, you know, I'm just so busy now selling houses. I, I can't do more than the time will allow. So at that point, uh, the obvious answer is to recruit some other people to come and join your business. So that's what I did. Um, and then you can obviously turn over more stock, you can increase your revenue, you increase your market share in the town, and you know, you're just extracting more value from the investment in the franchise that you, that you have, that you bought and you've developed. Um, but then, you know, one thing led to another and I ended up buying another territory next door <laughs> and recruited some more people. And uh, then we had a much bigger team, got myself a serviced office. Uh, my wife came into the business, she stopped doing mortgage broking as well, rather than you know, the four or five people I had in my business all playing a part in a single property transaction, which is normal. That's what most high street agents do. Um, we just have, well, you operate this part of the patch. I'll operate this part of the patch. You operate this part of the patch. And we all took the customer through from start to finish. And that's a very, very different way of doing estate agency, which is why it's good fun, uh, which is why customers give great feedback and why we're able to charge better fees uh, and all of the positives which come with helping somebody through that pretty major life journey uh, can be realised because you're there every second.